there have been many claims regarding the accuracy of the Baker rifle, most of which are taken out of context and or are exaggerated. That said, the rifle was accurate for its day and most importantly, operationally effective in its role. Like most flintlock rifles of the era, its accuracy depended on variables that will be explored here. Once trained, riflemen were permitted a certain amount of leeway in how they loaded and fired, all for the sake of accuracy. We'll deal with the patch first. The purpose of the patch is to hold the ball tightly in the barrel and to fill the grooves so as to impart the all-important spin on the projectile. For this experiment I have used two types of cotton material. Both are heavy and tightly woven. These characteristics are important to be able to hold enough lubricant and so they are suitably robust to withstand contact with the hot gases of the burning powder. One is a brown fabric that measures 0 0.016 in thickness. The other, mattress ticking that measures 0 0.022. I've used two types of ball in this rifle. One is cast from a Lee Precision mold from the US. The other from a mold made by Jeff Tanner in England. The Lee mold drops a ball that is nominally 0 .600, but measures a rather larger 0 .605. The Jeff Tanner mold, though without a sprue cutter, is custom made, and the ball drops out at 0 .594. Trimming the sprue, is simply done with a sharp knife. I have settled on the smaller version for the primary reason of ease of loading. The 594 ball rams without the need for a short starter. Accuracy, in my experience, does not suffer over the 0 .605 version. As mentioned in previous videos, I use two kinds of powder with the Baker rifle. For priming, I use 4F. Much experimentation has been made and is shown in an article on the Black Powder Mag website. The article outlines a series of experiments intended to show which placement of priming powder delivered the quickest ignition. One with the powder covering and filling the vent, one with the powder level to and next to the vent, and another with the powder placed in the outside edge of the pan and banked away from the vent. The version with the level powder next to the vent was deemed to be the fastest. The main charge is 2F GoX. It is measured in the historical way from a flask with a spout that dispenses the service charge of 3 and 1 half drams or 96 grains. Shooting the groupings was quite conventional, and I elected to use a bench and a rest for maximum accuracy. Part of evaluating the performance of a particular a combination of ball and patch is the examination of the spent patch. In this case, the thicker mattress ticking seemed to hold up the best, with the brown material suffering a little wear caused by a bit of blow-by or a rough spot in a groove. The mattress ticking suffered only some discoloration from the burning powder. To make the assessment as to which performed better, I used the figure of merit calculator as outlined in my video on that particular subject. The results were as follows, with the mattress ticking performing slightly better. To get good average results, I anticipate shooting this practice again at least twice more. These results combined with future ones will give a true picture for the most accurate load and patch combination for this rifle. Thanks for watching.